eight, nine guys that we feel we can we can go and, and play in, in Pac-12 football. So we just keep developing them. You know, they're just as important as as the guys in the front, as Hanson, as Lemieux, as Throckmorton, and Aiello, Warmack. They're just as Sewell. They're just as important as them. So that's what we're doing. We're focusing on on um, on trying to get them up to that same level. So there's no drop off if they have to go in and play at some point in time. Having a group of all five guys coming back, people yes, sir. don't necessarily think position battles, but it seems sure. like Warmack and Aiello are. Yeah, I mean, every, everybody, they're, they're not, not those, both those guys are starters now. Yeah. I mean, whoever thinks they're not, they're fools. I mean, both those guys are starting any Pac-12 school there. We actually feel that we've got seven or eight of them that can right now start at any of the other Pac-12 schools as well. So, uh, but that's how we look at it. And you, they're, they're rotating on a daily basis, as you can see. And uh, they're just, you know, all battling, all battling up. They all know they're competing against the room. You know, that's, that's a one thing a lot of times people think, we, like Coach Cristobal says, it's an organizational depth chart. Right, it's not a depth chart. It's an organizational deal. And our job is to get the best five guys on the field. And if one guy goes down, who are the next best five? It's not who's the hey, who's the who's the third head behind the right tackles. It's who's the next best guy. So we're trying to move them around and stuff like that to develop that uh, that versatility and flexibility. When it comes to the fall scrimmage, do you yeah. expect more about an experience, forming experience, yeah. rather than an inexperience? Or? Yeah, to me, ex uh, experience is overrated, in my opinion. I mean, experience has, has nothing to do with preparation. I mean, you still got to prepare whether you're a guy who started 38 games like some of these guys have or a guy who has only started 13 or 5, whatever it is, right? It's experiences doesn't do anything. I mean, experience is what's happened in the past. It's what you do now and what you do going forward. So uh, it's just about continuing to prepare. And uh, we expect the same thing out of a guy like Throckmorton as we do as a guy of, of Salah or of, of Randazzo tomorrow. You know, go out and execute and get better. I mean, we coach them as hard uh, as we coach the, the, the guys that are here, just got here, as we as Jonah Tanua. So uh, that's, that's, I mean, that might sound like coach talk, but it's it's the way we do it here. As we speak of the approach of the offseason, of it's one thing for younger guys or like Sala to come in yeah. pretty big, but for yeah. your fifth year seniors to all sure. pretty much universally be losing weight and changing their body composition sure. at this point in their careers, uh, what kind of was the approach to, to make that a point of emphasis for everybody? You know what, it's, it's a tremendous tribute to the strength and conditioning program, and it's, uh, you know, getting rid of, of, of some of those uh, body fat percentages and uh, getting rid of some of the, those pounds and turning it turning it around. And if you look at the NFL, you know, all these everybody stacks, you know, 330 pounds, 340 pounds. There are not a lot of 330, 340 pound offensive tackles anymore in the NFL. Uh, NFL's gone the other way, and you see a lot of these guys in the NFL as they get older, they try to lose more weight for, for to, to get longevity and build a better uh, life after football. So, uh, but that's a tremendous tribute to Coach Feld and stuff like that. And these guys, they continue to challenge themselves, you know, not, not just be trying to get faster, get a little quicker, you know, and stuff like that. So that's why you see their, their bodies change. You know, they, they, they might be losing some weight, but they, they've gained power, they've gained strength, they've gained explosion. Again, that's a tribute to Coach Feld and his staff in there. Sewell was great for you guys last year, especially at such a young age. What's yeah. his next step forward? Well, the, uh, he's, he was a guy who played above his, 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 his years. And uh, next is to be just dominant. That's the next step for him is to become a dominant player, play in and play out. You know, that, that's that's the thing, the consistency of it, the durability of it, you know. And uh, so, you know, he ex just he he has a higher level of expectation for himself now that he's done it for a year, you know, that he's he's the one who's continuing to push himself and to get better. You know, he's a guy that's gone from 358 pounds, whatever he was when he got here to now a lot less than that, you know, and he's moving a lot better. He feels and he could tell he's he's very, very hard on himself, you know, very, very hard on himself when he when he messes something up in practice or 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 technique wise, hand placement, hat, hat placement, stuff like that. So uh, it's a guy that he, I mean, he wants to be the best. He wants to be the best uh, that he can be uh, right now. Ideally, how much in like a conference game would you, I mean, you mentioned having eight, nine guys, yeah. you can bring them in. Yeah. But how much would you want to bring some guys in for a throck more? Well, they, they have to earn that time now. If you're going to pull as a coach, if you're going to pull a guy like a Throckmorton and put somebody else in, that guy's got to that he's got to earn that time now. When I say we have eight and nine starters, I would say I'm I'm, I'm saying this. I, I I'm telling you right now, you could take a lot of the guys on our second line. I bet you could take three or four guys on our second line, and every other old line coach in the Pac-12 would want that person. So that's what I mean by that. You know, I'm, I'm not saying we're going to rotate Throckmorton unless that guy's equal. I'm not saying we're going to rotate Hanson unless that guy's equal. We're not saying that. But what we are saying is, if something happens to them, there's not going to be a significant drop off. I mean, you go watch the film. There's a lot of Pac-12 schools that could use a, use three or four of those guys in that second line, and uh, we just got to try to keep pushing them and developing them because they help push those starters. So that's what I mean by that. You know, who are those three guys? Who are well? You've got you got Malasala, you've got Stephen Jones, you've got Alex Forsyth, uh, you've got a guy like uh, well. To me, to me, 
Ayello and Mormack, they're starters. So we've got six starters up front, right? And then, I mean, Stephen Jones, man, people sleeping on him now. Stephen Jones, a heck of a football player. Uh, he's got a tremendous future, and the future is going to come whenever, whenever he finally just goes and, and takes it, you know. But it, but he's he's a tremendous football player. But Alex Forsythe, I mean Alex Forsythe, I, I I would not hesitate if you had to start Alex Forsythe. We're going to win with Alex. You're going to win with Stephen. You're going to win with Malasala. Uh, so those are the kind of guys that I'm talking about that are making that push uh, to get there. You know. Do you want to have a decided? Starter there as far as the five though, Alex. Or do you, could you foresee without giving yeah. too much away here, where you could go, yeah, you could alternate between them based on strategy, where you, you want to either pass block or run block. You know what, those guys, those guys, that, that first of all, the, the synergy in that group, nothing will come between them. They they do not allow the competition to come between the brotherhood that that whole group has. So from that standpoint, it's 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 really easy uh, to do that. You know, uh, so I don't think that that's difficult at all. Uh, you know, so, you know, I, I do know this, though, th them six dudes are going to play. Those six guys will play just because they've earned the right to play here. They've earned that right to play here. And uh, so, you know, and it's, it doesn't mess up the, the continuity of the group. You know, you do it in practice, not like you're just going to do it in the game. We do it on a daily, daily base in practice, so it becomes, um, it becomes routine when it comes to the game. Where's that, where's that synergy come from? You know what? First of all, the character of them as human beings. I mean, yeah, everybody talks about their football stuff, but they are good human beings. That whole group, they're good human beings that um, were raised properly at home, were raised properly when they got here, were raised properly when Coach Cristobal took over. You know, and they're just great, great people. Uh, they're graduated already, so they're smart. You know, they're smart, they're caring, they were brought right. I mean, they're just character kids, you know. They're character kids that, you know, Aiello and Warmack and, and, and Throckmorton and, and, and Hanson and Lemieux, uh, those guys, I mean, you know those guys, and they when when Warmack came here, the way that they embraced him, you know they didn't feel him as an outsider. They felt that he was a brother that was coming in to play, and they openly embraced him. It's just the way they are as people, and you got to know that when you're recruiting, you got to know you're recruiting the right guys that are not going to see these guys as threats, okay? And that's a big thing with Coach Cristobal. These guys aren't threats. These guys are here uh, to compete to make the room stronger, and those guys are you know, great about it. You know, it's not, and that's pretty much, I think you take any offensive line in America and that's the way it is. I mean, that's the way it is. It ain't wide receiver room. It ain't the DB room. It ain't the running back room. All right. You, you have to be a selfless individual to want to play O-line. If you're selfish, you're not playing O-line, not in high school, not in college, not in the NFL. So that's the first thing. When you choose, Hey, I want to be an O-lineman, right? That, 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 there's a selflessness to that. So I think that comes with the territory as well. You mentioned recruiting Alex, one yes. recruiting question. I know you can't talk about specific things, Yeah, no doubt. You targeted five, you got five. Do you yeah. feel like, well, first, how do you feel in general about that group? Yeah. And second, is there a center because that was such a high priority yeah. in you that know, group of five? You know what? We, we uh, you know, again, I, you know, I don't want to get myself in trouble here, yeah. right? But they're, they're, the kids we, we've, that, that have committed to us, you know, they're, they're a lot like these guys here, you know, that, that, that we have here. And they're, they're guys that we feel, that we feel have the ability to help continue uh, the tradition of the of the great offensive line play that has been here way before I got here, way before Coach Cristobal got here, and just continue to add to it. Yeah, we do feel we have guys in that group. We feel we have other guys here that can snap the football. Right, that's important. You know, and it's not necessarily you have to go find because Hanson Hanson played left tackle. Hanson was a left tackle in high school, and he's played center here. So you don't have to find a guy that's played center to become a center. You know what I'm saying? So we, we feel we've, we've, we've found guys that can do that, you know, and uh, so we, we feel good about it. We just, every, you know, re, like Coach said, recruiting is a lifeblood. You got to recruit them every day, every day, every day, every day. You got to recruit the parents every day, every day, and you just get to marathon. So you just got to keep running it. What will be a successful scrimmage on Saturday for your position group? For us? Yeah. Heck, uh, that they all come out healthy, you know, <laughs> um, you know, that, that and just that we establish the run and we keep, you know, pr protect 10. And, you know, to me, it's more, you know, to me, I, I don't worry. We don't worry. I, we don't worry about the scoreboard. To me, it's more about are we executing? You know, if they, if they bring a stunt, are we passing the stunt off? Are we making the right calls? To me, there's more to that. You know, it, it could be, I mean, it could be it, it, Herbert throws a ball, a guy uh, overthrows a guy or the guy drops it or what have you, and it's a bad play for everything else, and it's a work of art for us up front. You know, it could be a work of art for us up front in the run game, and the running back took a wrong read, but it's a work of art. So that's what we get lost in. That's what I get lost in, at least, in my opinion, and that's the way we are on game day. You know, so um, it's just the execution, right, the execution, the communication. That would be the things that I would look for. 
at, in the scrimmage? 